Gavel, you must choose human or choose Colas. If you choose human, no longer welcome with Colas tribe. I must follow the path and live as a human. Last time on the Lost Legends of Scadriel. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a street wanderer. I'm gonna go see what the local markets have. One of the most prominent metallurgists of our time has been kidnapped. As such, we have offered the reward of a bead of atium for his safe return. Lord Falcom will straighten up his shoulders and walk just as proud as he possibly can, dueling canes swinging flamboyantly. Everybody seems to be up in a tizzy. Hey guys, how about that mob-related topic? I'm a, no, 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 they're bad. I just, I just thought of something funny, you know. Oh, I like jokes. What, what is it? You. Lord Falcom is immediately going to try and scale this roof. Screw it, it's adventure time! He threw a hammer at me and it hurt. Yeah, let's go after the Colossus, guys. Come on, man. My dear lady, I am a professional magician. I have many talents under my hat. Hello, and welcome back to the Lost Legends of Scadriel Mistborn Adventure Game Podcast. I'm your host and narrator, Trevor. I go by Fifth of Daybreak on the 17th Shard Forums, and with me I have the rest of the Lost Legends of Scadriel. Hi, my name is John. I go by Clovermite on the 17th Shard Forums, and I play Tony Darkomancy. And I am David, and I play Lord Falco. My name is Brian, and my character's name is Tajmil. My name's Kelly, and I play Merida. All right, so we decided that we wanted to go to Lord Spook's mansion. And this is to get the rescue the person that had been kidnapped, right? So are we at the gates? So you guys come up to the front of the manor, and you see the same scene that Tajmil and Lord Falcombe saw earlier. Just a group of very angry lower-class citizens demonstrating, shouting various slogans such as, The words of founding wanted better for us. Alright, is the, can I look for, like, something to form, a, like, a soapbox, like a crate, so that Tony can stand on it? Uh, yeah, we'll say that maybe you found, like, a box on the way. Awesome. Harmony would be ashamed! Alright, so, so Tony gets up on the box, and he, he pulls out Down with the two of his metallic rings to do, like, the, oh, these rings are together trick, but then pulls them apart. And he starts kind of banging them together to make a sound. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a very rare, on the street, impromptu performance of the amazing, the wonderful, you've heard of him, Tony Darkomancy of the new Ellendale Darkomancies. And he begins riding their sense of curiosity. Okay, and you have the uh, riot crowd ability, so you can make a riot roll uh, with two reduced dice. Too reduced. Okay, and then do I get a bonus for, for my personality or specialty being distractions? Uh, absolutely. Go ahead and give yourself one, and then also for being a stage magician. Awesome. I got a three. A pair of threes? Yes. All right. So everybody kind of stops what they're doing and turns to stare at you. At least for a couple of seconds, they, you have everybody's attention. Merida, Tajmil, and Lord Falcombe, what do you do while everybody turns? While everybody turns? Uh, I, I think that Lord Falcombe would just grab Merida and grab Tajmil and say, get behind, and just immediately start pushing through the crowd. I'll, like, rip your hand off me, because I don't like you touching me. Or at least try to. Well, I'm not, like, grabbing you, like, pulling you. I'm just, like, come here, you know, like, grabbing your attention. I'm not, like, manhandling anybody. I'm still going to be glaring at you. I don't even notice as I'm barging through through the crowd. And I won't even make you roll for that because they're, they're not exactly... They're distracted. Yeah, they're distracted and they're not exactly, like, you know, they're not s- striking, you know. They're not, like, angry at anybody who's trying to go into this place to work or anything like that. 
you know, they don't think that you're scabs. They're just trying to be heard. Yeah. Well, I, I think that just Lord Falcombe is a pretty imposing figure. And so he just march on through as if there are no people. So we get there to the gates pretty quickly. Absolutely. Let's jump back to Tony for just a second. Tony, why don't you give me a charm roll plus two? I got a pair of fives and a nudge. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and describe what magic trick you do to entrance the crowd. Are we going to see whether the, the card trick works or was that the card trick works right there? Um, that's just you trying to keep the crowd's attention. But, so I'll let you decide whether or not, w- in what way you're keeping the crowd's attention. So that's entirely up to you. Okay. Because cause I totally want it to be like... There's a chance that his card trick completely fails, but he still miraculously manages to keep their attention. Uh, give me a wits roll plus one, then. Uh, yeah, he got a pair of ones. I mean, it, how complicated of a trick were you doing? I was just going to do, like, a simple card trick where he, like, f- you know, flips him, flips him across, you know, like, shuffling in midair kind of a deal. And, like, some sleight of hand stuff. I mean, that seems like it would be fairly simple, so I wouldn't be inclined to set the difficulty above one, but with your nudge and the roll that you got with charm, I'm I'm going to go ahead and say that this scene is entirely up to you. So describe as you will. Uh, so he, he pulls out, like, the, the deck of cards. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eye on the king of spades. He's fast, he's quick, and he's in the air. And he just starts flipping the cards back and forth, like, between his hands. And at first, it's, like, working perfectly and almost mesmerizing. But then a few of the cards end up, like, flinging out in stray directions. And he accidentally loses, like, the king of, of spades, and it lands on, on someone's hand. And uh, then he says, aha, you, sir, you look like a volunteer. Come on up with the king of spades. Oh, he picked me. Guys, he picked me. It's me. (laughs) Oh, I've never been picked for anything before. (laughs) Big smile on his face. He runs up there and drops his sign. (laughs) And and drops his what? Drops like the picket sign he had. Oh, the sign. Okay. All right, sir. What I have before you, and and he pulls out like from a hidden pocket in his tuxedo, like a pair of rings, a uh, complete ordinary pair of rings here. I want you to verify that these are not magical in any way. And he hands them to the guy. He goes to try and swallow it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> not not elementary rings, sir. Uh, I mean, uh, just just pull. And, and Tony grabs one one side of it, mass and a pull. Okay. He inspects the ring and follows your instructions. As you see, now, these rings are bound together by the power of my mind. But the moment I change my mind is the moment in which they come apart. And then should I do another roll for the magic trick? Sure. All right, now, failed it. I did I did two. Was I supposed to still do plus one? Yeah, because for your magician. Oh, I succeeded. Five. All right. So then, then as he pulls, he twists it slightly, and the rings come apart, and and he just points and gestures. Give me a riding roll as well. Only got a pair of twos that time. All right, so the, the whole crowd just applauds. And then we're going to go ahead and shift scenes and go back over to the other three. We'll say you guys are inside the gate, and uh, you can head into the manor if you so choose. I see no reason why not. Is there, like, any guards at the gate, or these people just peacefully protesting outside? I mean, there's guards watching the gate, but they can tell that you're not, uh, that you're not with them, and that, you know, you obviously have the look of more well-to-do with you in the lead, and actually a couple of the guards are kind of caught up in the magic act as well. And one of them even, like, dropped his, uh, (laughs) his dueling cane and started applauding. So they're, they're paying you no attention. I, I would approach, like, the most respectable-looking one, the one that's, like, looks like he's still doing his job, his or her job, and I would I would ask them to be escorted to whoever could give us more information about this. All right, he's going to look at you, and he's going to look back at Tony, and he's going to look at you, and he's gonna be like, man, I've been watching this crowd all day. The minute something interesting happens, you're going to... All right, fine. And he picks his dueling cane back up, and he st- he starts walking you back towards the manor. And he pulls you up to the front of the door, and he opens the door, and he's just like, just go in there, and somebody will deal with you. And then he <laughs> runs back out to the front of the gate. 
<laughs> so are there any advisors or anything that are just, or servants around? All right, so you guys walk inside the manor, and as soon as you walk in, you notice that it's one of the more put-together buildings in town. And from Lord Spook's reputation, you can understand that it's not necessarily by his choice, but rather by necessity of his station that he's living in the way he has. So it's got more, some intricate carvings. Stained glass has been installed in some of the windows, and there's a nice, neat desk right at the front where what looks like a terrace servant um, of old style is sitting there with a uh, docile but pleasant-looking smile on his face. Okay, well, I'm going to walk up there, and I say, excuse me, but is there a way we can talk to Lord Spook? We're interested in the abducted person case. Oh, yes. I, uh, I'm i sorry, but you won't be able to talk to Lord Spook directly, but I can give you all of the information that you need to get started. And then as soon as he says that, the, lore, or the door behind you bangs open again, and this woman rushes in, looking absolutely distraught. As she comes up, she kind of pushes Tajmil out of the way, and then comes up right next to you and like gives you a sidelong glance, dismisses you as unimportant, and turns towards him, and uh, towards the steward, and then says... Has there been any word of, of Ralston yet? It's been a couple of days. I told you they killed all of our house guards and he's just gone. They kidnapped him. What can you tell me? What's being done? And he just kind of gives her a, a stern, a stern look, not disapproving, but just kind of to a calming down look and says, Madam Penrod, I can assure you that everything that can be done is being done. However, there are other important matters going on, and as a noble house, you are expected to keep your own matters firmly in hand. So, we will give you the resources we can afford to spare when we can spare them. And for the moment, we must attend to the things that are important to the entire city, and not just to one house. As I've explained to you before. And she just kind of huffs and says, Well, I've told you there's that half-blooded Coloss in the city. I'm sure it was him. He's after our atium. I know it was him. If you just take him into custody and question him, this would all be over with. And at this point, he kind of raises a hand and motions over. And a couple of guards that are in the corner kind of come forward and gently take her and slowly escort her out as she starts screaming obscenities about how the Lord uh, Mistborn is doing nothing to protect the people of the city, as evident by the rabble that's protesting in the streets and running wild and amuck, and everything has just gone to chaos ever since uh, Ellen died, and before that, the Lord Ruler and, and House, House Penrod just won't stand for it. I, I, I'm sorry about that. What, what was your name, young miss? My name's Merida. Well, Merida, there's not much information that we can give you. However, Mr. Bornholm, the very skilled metallurgist who has been working on developing new metals for our Mistborn and our Alam or for our mist Mistings and our Alamancers, has gone missing, and we very much suspect that he has been kidnapped by a very skilled group, possibly from another city. We very much suspect that it's from one of the other cities that is just being set up, whether it's from Vindel or maybe possibly that one up the Iron Gate River. We're not quite sure, but we believe that they fled along the Iron Gate River and escaped with him and all of his equipment and notes. I, I will give you, uh, give you all of the information we have in this packet here, and he hands you over a packet. Go ahead and add that to your notes. Information about kidnapping. This is everything we have to give out to all of the mercenaries who are looking to solve this problem. And as I'm sure you've heard, there was a farmer who discovered a bead of atium, and that will be rewarded to whoever can bring back this metallurgist in time and safe and sound. Uh, and if you manage to bring back his research as well, I'm sure we can throw in a couple of extra boxings. So that's 
really all I have to give you at this time. Please make all haste. All right, thank you, sir. One more thing before I go. There's been some rumors on the street about this guy named Fence who discovered some floor plans that you ha that are of Lord Spook's mansion. You might want to be careful of that. Our guards are very attentive. You have nothing to worry about. And you kind of faintly hear with your tin burning the, the same guard who was complaining about uh, Lord Falcombe just go, ooh, from outside. Uh, when the Pinrod lady is escorted outside, at that point, I think Lord Falcombe would actually follow her, so. Yeah, me too. So, Lord Falcombe, you follow this, la um, this lady out. She is visibly upset. Okay, so was she escorted by guards? They they didn't necessarily, like, drag her out, but they kind of came up to her and were like, it's time to leave, and then walked her to the door, and she left in a huff. I would walk out beside her and say, those poor fools, there's no respect here anymore for true nobility. Tell me, madam, what is your problem? Finally, someone with some manners and who actually knows decency. It's my husband, Ralston Penrod. Those fiends kidnapped him. They're after my atium, jealous of our wealth and status, of everything that was given to us by the Ventures before they passed. Hmm, just how much atium are we talking here? I, I would immediately interrupt him and say, you have no permission to speak with the lady. Tajmil, I'll join you outside. Damn! <laughs> He just told you... Told me what? <laughs> he told you, this is not your place. Get out of here, peasant. Well, he's got a point, you know. She, she gives that. you the haughtiest glare that she can manage. Me? And like, yeah, and just kind of... <laughs> and then, like, grabs Falcone by the arm and steps a little bit further down the steps away from you, Taj. As I turn away, I whisper, I probably got more golds than you do, lady. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the rapscallions kidnapped my husband, the head of our household, and left a note demanding that we give them our bead of atium. Hmm. That is unfortunate. What do you know of these rapscallions? This is all I have of them. And she pulls out a note and hands it to you, and it says, we'll be in contact we demand your ATM, or else your husband will die. Hmm. Who would know of your ATM? That seems to be the first question. I'm sure many around the city are jealous of our status and our wealth. But who specifically would know of the ATM? I'm sure that's not a secret that you just barter around telling everyone. Uh, she gives, like, kind of a nervous titter and then says, What's the point in having wealth and status if people don't know about it? And then just to metagame a little bit, um, you would remember from your meeting with Snee the previous night that House Eric Keller is the only house that actually has Atium, and there were other houses that claim to have it but don't actually. Oh, boy. Hmm. Well... Yeah, yeah, them Coloss fights are looking a whole lot better now, huh? <laughs> but but she kind of, like, grabs your arm and pulls you closer. There is this man, a Coloss blooded man, who's been snooping around the city, and I'm sure he has something to do with it. If someone of your... And she kind of looks you up and down, not suggestively, but, like, appreciating your well-built manner of your stature, were to sit him down and tell him what's what, I'm sure that he would tell you where my husband is. Where might I find this half-blooded brute? Well, he's just somewhere in the city. You can't miss him. He's taller than everybody else, and he's got blue skin. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> from, from the crowd, you hear another, Ooh. From the magic show? Yep. Yay. <laughs> Lord Falcombe would say, Well, I will do my best. Is there any way that I can get in contact with you? 
Just show up to Penrod Manor. We'll let you write in if you have any news about dear old Ralston. Please. I will do my best, my lady. I hope to bring your husband back in as good condition as possible. Oh, thank you. I, I'm sure we will reward you handsomely. Ralston handles all the finances, but as soon as he's back home safe, we will find a way to give you the thanks you deserve. I would make a gesture over to Lord Falcombe and be like, hey, come here. Oh, wait. Falcombe wouldn't remember that from Snee because he wasn't in the room. Just to jump back. Was who was in the room? Uh, everybody else. Oh. I would I would tell him about I would tell him, listen, this isn't a surefire thing, you know, that this person's telling the truth. They could be lying to us. But if you want to, we should set up a dragnet in the city. Let's go get Merida and, and Tony, and let's set up a dragnet and and uh, see if we can't find this character. I mean, how hard wow. could he be? What I think, Tajmil, is that this lady talks far too much. There's too many people that knew she claimed to have a bead of adium, and we know that we were not the only ones tasked to gather a bead of adium to prove ourselves. This seems like a fairly recent occurrence, so I'm thinking that another one of our rival groups is responsible for the kidnapping. Well, then we should get to the bottom of it and hold him ransom and rob her blind. I, I'm not completely on board with this. But it does merit investigation, especially this coloss. I can't I agree. stand those creatures. I hate them ever since I was a little boy. I can understand. They did... A single Many tear runs things. down my face if, as I turn away. Sonichu, like, flutters onto your shoulder and then rubs his head against your cheek and kind of, like, Aah. Aww. I pet him endearingly. All right, let's jump back to Tony, because things can't go your way the whole time without you doing some rolls. Yes, this is true. All right, and then for my next trick... I will pull my eponymous, uh, I think that's the right word, uh, Mist Rabbit from my hat. And, and Tony dramatically like flips his hat with his hands over and then reaches in and then I'm going to do the roll. Ah, uh, nothing. I got a nudge. <laughs> All right. So you reach into your hat and then you keep reaching around and you find, you, you can't find fluffles in there anywhere. And then you, you feel like something slimy crawl down your back and then suddenly Fluffles plops down from the black back of your tuxedo <laughs> behind you onto the stage and the crowd just goes wild because not only did you fail to do the magic trick but for some reason the mist rabbit appeared from uh, almost as if you you defecated it and <laughs> and that was just like the the greatest trick that you could have done for this lower class citizen citizenry that was just <laughs> absolutely just so mad and like this the guy that you called up earlier was just like hey did 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 lord spook send you out here for us uh, uh, tony replies no my good man i am here for you of my own accord remember the name Tony Darkomancy of the new Allendale Darkomancies. And then he like bows dramatically. I wish we had more nobles like this guy. He seems like the real deal. And then everybody starts clapping. Um, do I have money? I have resources, right? I want to oh, like lots of resources. reach into my pockets and like toss out some money to the crowd. Okay, yeah. Give, uh, give me a resource roll. Uh, that's eight. Four, six, eight. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think I nailed this. I got a pair of fives and two nudges. <laughs> I set the difficulty at one. So uh, you you pull your purse out, and you were going to just fling a couple coins, but what you end up doing is accidentally pulling at the bottom of the purse. So as you go to pull, like fling the purse out, you, you just accidentally invert the thing. And so, like, a huge shower of coins sprays out over the entire crowd. 
and the whole crowd just starts scattering and pulling, like grabbing coins, going crazy. And like everybody's just like, thank you, Tony Darko Mamsie. Thank you so much. You're the greatest. And like as as soon as all of the coins have been picked up, like the whole crowd just disperses, leaving like a small mess of signs and like not nobody's left there at all. Nice. And then Tony scoops up uh, Fluffles and pets him a bit and puts him back in his hat and then just goes and leans on the gate waiting for the rest of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I love this scene. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Uh, let's go back to uh, Merida and Lord Falcom and Tajmil. We'll say that you guys have all met back up outside the manor. Yeah, yeah, we would be exiting, going on to gather up Tony. I feel like, like may- maybe having a little powwow about uh, Penrod on the way, or would you wait to inform everybody about it? And- I'd, I'd start right away since uh, me and Lord Falcone knew about it. We have to. In- in- well, I mean, would you Merida. would you tell Merida, or would you wait yeah. until Tony's there too? No, I'd tell Merida on the way back to tell Tony. Okay, so let's go ahead and role play that out a little bit. So there's this missing guy, and they might have some ATM, but Lord Falcone brings up a good point. It could be an adversary crew, and I got a really good idea on how to get back at them and maybe get a little cash ourselves. Now, we're going to have to get our hands dirty, but if you're in it, we're going to kidnap this guy and hold him ransom. And if it's the real deal, we're going to get rewarded a piece of ATM. So are you in or are you in? Isn't that a little played out already? Hasn't it really just been done? What? They they already kidnapped him. Oh, whoa, we, whoa, whoa, we whoa. you can't kidnap tell the kidnappy. You cannot tell me that you believe that he's actually been kidnapped if this whole thing's a fake. He's in on it too. I know the type. No. No, he was kidnapped by a rival group of ours that is working to the same goal of gathering a single bead of ATM. I don't think he's in on it. I guess I completely misunderstood the concept. You're right. Merida, you would absolutely remember that House Eric Keller is the only house that actually has ATM. But I thought you said some could have it, though. No, uh, Snee said that Eric Keller is the only one that has it. Okay. The All other right. ones were just spreading rumors for the status. Completely retract that then. Um, I say that we uh, we, we got to find out more about what this lady is, is, is doing other than promising false reward for a kidnapped husband. Maybe we should help her out. She promised no reward. She said a piece of ATM. Boxing. No. Oh. No. She, she only implied that they had ATM. And at, by this time, you guys have caught up with Tony. Hey, Tony, how'd your show go, buddy? I knocked them dead, and he gestures at the signs. So I didn't think Fluffles ate people. <laughs> ha, you jest. He doesn't. My face is serious. That Marin you know face of. is just serious, and she's kind of looking a little, like, creeped out, like, thinking that Fluffles actually ate the bodies. One of the guards runs up. And, like, he has, like, a little p- pad of paper in his hand. He's like, uh, Mr. Darkomancy, can I have your autograph? Tony, like, plasters a giant grin on his face. Why, of course, good man. And then he just... Does he have a pen with him? Uh, we'll say that the guard does, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he signs it with a flourish. Uh, can I can I hold your mist rabbit? Oh, absolutely. And, and he, he pulls Fluffles out and immediately starts riding affection as per usual and hands it to the man. All right, give me a really good riding roll, otherwise this will be funny. <laughs> it's still five, right? Yep. Well, actually, it'll be a little lower, because he he likes fluffles from the show. Ah, uh, I got three nudges, but nothing else. <laughs> as soon as fluffles hits his hands, and he looks down and actually sees what the thing is, he drops it and screams <laughs> and runs away. <laughs> but he he leaves his dueling cane there. And so go ahead and add that to your props, John. You now have a dueling cane. I thought I already had a dueling cane. Can Merida grab it? Uh, okay, you, you can go ahead and add a pad of paper and a uh, pen to your props. Or, or Really? Awesome. Or Either that or uh, Merida can have a dueling cane, whichever you guys want to metagame out and decide. Um, makes sense that, that he would be dropping the dueling cane. So Merida can have a dueling cane. That works for me. Yeah, because I have no weapon right now. <laughs> 
All right, so Merida, go ahead and add a dueling cane to your props. Yeah, Merida just has a huge, like, smile on her face, and she's just looking at this dueling cane, like, so happy. Like, she just whispers, like, I have a weapon under her breath. So at this moment, Tony, Tony turns to the group and says, so what did we find out about our kidnapped metallurgist? Well, we found out where he was last found. It was by some river, I think. Well, I'll go ahead and jump in here. The information packet that you have says that he was last seen in his workshop, and then there was a group of, of five people were seen carrying a large bundle from the residence, along with a couple of horses that were heavily burdened with supplies. They headed for the Iron Gate River, where they got onto a canal boat and started sailing up the river in the direction of one of the new cities. Sounds like some good information. So you guys interested in going after him? That's why we're here, right? Well, I think we're faced with a significant choice. Trust in the Lord Mistborn to provide the ATM, or we do already have a heist in mind for the House Era Keller, where we know there to be ATM. And we know that we could take it. Then let's go with the path of least resistance and go to the house of Eric Keller and steal this ATM from him. That sounds like the path of most resistance. How? It's guaranteed ATM. Well, no, we don't even know that. It, well, we know that it's not in the house. And all we have is just an embarrassing secret. And the house is going to be heavily fortified. Tony chimes in and says, I'm confused. I thought we voted. <laughs> Why... If we weren't going to... It's a long story. You were doing your magic show and whatnot. We know now that it will take us out of New Ellendale just to try and find this man. But we know that House Eric Keller has ATM in the city that we could do so without any conflict. Uh, It was just last night that he was taken. Yeah, but he said he already got on a canal boat going north, right? If I remember the map correctly, it would be east. But I don't think the canal boats were necessarily that fast. And they they left at night. And it's just morning now. So I'm going to side up to Tony. I'm going to be like, hey, Tony, you know, another city means more fame for you to spread. You already got some fame in this city. Why not another? Tony gets really excited. I like being famous. I think this sounds like an excellent idea. Let's head off immediately, I say. See if we can't charter a canal boat of our own. Everybody in agreement with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you guys start heading off towards the canals, which is sort of towards the marketplace earlier where Tajmil and Lord Falcombe heard the town crier. On your way over, why don't ever why doesn't everybody give me a wits roll? Merida, are you still burning tin? Yeah. Alright, go ahead and give me a nine then. And you'll probably have about 15 minutes left of uh, your first charge in your first file. Okay. A wits roll? Yep. So four? Yep. Tony actually got a three here. I got three fives and two sixes. I got a five, a three, a two, and a one. So nothing. I have got two fours. Okay, so everybody except for Tajmil, when you get... Just b- before the canals, you all happen to see a small crowd gathering around this tallish man with bluish skin. And Merida especially starts hearing a lot of angry voices yelling things like, Go back to the Coloss, you freak! Well, I'm very interested and I go to investigate right away. Tony's curious too. As soon as Lord Falcom sees that this is a Coloss blooded man, he is visibly agitated. He's gripping his dueling cane and glaring daggers at him, but he stands stock still. Okay, so Merida and Tony, as you guys get closer... Um, one more thing real quick. Tony's also going to like immediately send out a wave of calming. Give me a roll. Two. That's not going to be good enough because none of them are feeling very calm. Definitely does not work on Falcom. He fought against the Coloss right before the Catacindra, so he has a lot of bad memories with that. The calming would... there There is no calm. We don't want you here. Go back to your tribe. And as you guys get closer, you, you see uh, one of the guys near the back pick up a rock and throw it at this guy 
who's as of up get to this point, just been kind of like holding his hands up, kind of like, hey, calm down, stay back, not looking very angry or anything, just with a resigned look on his face. But this rock hits him right in the face. He kind of jerks back, but when he uh, comes back to center, this look of rage is on his face. Even uh, Tajmil and Lord Falcom can kind of hear him, even though it's like almost a low whisper. But it's just such a powerful, like, wave of emotion that it just carries across this angry crowd. And he says, you will leave now or you will face my wrath. And he reaches to his side and he pulls out this giant coloss sized cleaver and just pulls it up into a ready position and takes a ready stance and just holds it there and stares down the crowd. And instantly the whole crowd just breaks and disperses and runs in every direction. As soon as all of them like start running and he sees that they start running, he starts to put his sword away. As soon as he grabs his weapon, Lord Falcom runs up and he has his dueling cane in his hand and he is about to get busy. I'm going to roll a uh, wits for him to see if he notices you in the commotion. He does, and he gets a nudge, so he uh, he notices you, and then he pulls his cleaver back to ready, points it at you, and he says, Do you wish to test your medal against me, Alomancer? I've killed bigger than you before. Don't test me, boy. I have no quarrel with you. And I have no quarrel with you. I have a quarrel with your kind. But if you threaten these people one more time... Could I push on the medal? Uh, you can, yes. Um, let's do the conversation first. What was that you just said, David? I said, but if you threaten these people in any way, I will kill you now. It is no threat to defend oneself, Alamancer. Tony's gonna interrupt. He's not gonna let this escalate to a fight without doing something. Merida's gonna follow him, too, because I don't want to fight. I'm gonna go stand between them. Whoa, whoa, I think we're all off on the wrong foot here. I know the perfect solution to this. And he pulls Fluffles oh, out of his no. hat and immediately starts riding affection. Oh, no. We all just need to pat Fluffles. This is like Jigglypuff with the freaking sing. This guy is not even going to break eye contact with Falcom, but he's just going to say, you should listen to your foppish friend. There is no need for violence here. They attacked me first. Falcom does not even notice Fluffles either. Like, it is eye to eye. The imagery I'm getting here is just, like, two cats staring at each other. Yeah, like, if, if he does not put away his weapon and walk away, like, there will be a fight. Is essentially, like, the posturing that's going on here. And Lord Falcom like, reiterates, put your weapon away and walk away now or you die here. You have wise friends. I assume that means you have some grain of wisdom as well. I told you, Alamancer, I have no quarrel with you. And he sheathes his blade. But I will also not accept threats and orders. I have no reason to leave this place. And I will not take orders from one such as you. Leave this place because your very presence is disturbing the peace. Harmony has decreed Rust harmony. that this city is for all people, all humans. My blood bleeds red just as yours does. Boys, boys, you're both pretty. Can you stop now? Uh, I don't see Lord Falcom backing down from this. What, like, what happened with all. Fluffles, though? Fluffles is just doing this uh, Lion King right now. <laughs> so it's not really helping the situation between the two uh, not much. cats with their backs up? Oh, boy. I go up to Tajmil and I say, hey, can you... Like, distract Lord Falcone or something to get him away so it doesn't become a bloodbath. All right, I take my bird out and I immediately throw it at Lord Falcone to try and see <laughs> if I can distract him. <laughs> give give me a physique roll plus a two. physique roll plus two. Or plus um, one. Um, So that would be not very high, so four, okay. Oh, I got three sixes and a, and a two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what ends up happening is like Sonichu like flies forward, and you think that it's gonna like hit Falcom right in the face, but at the last second, 
Sanachu just veers off and then flies and lands right on the top of uh, Fluffles' third skull <laughs> and then, like, strikes a really majestic pose with his wings out and, like, flaps them a couple times. And then uh, Gavel, it's, it's this guy's name, looks over and just starts laughing, uproariously laughing, and actually, like, falls down to the ground onto his feet uh, or onto his butt just because he's laughing so hard. Well, well, we'll just say that, like, all of the tension is out of Gavel. You should, you should take your own advice, Alamancer, and put your weapon away. You will find no fight here. When he, when he had put away his cleaver, I think Lord Falcone would have, you know, he's going to meet every de-escalation with his own, but he really thinks that this guy needs to get out of here because he's not welcome and it's his very presence that's causing the problem. We don't like your kind around here. And it, yeah, it, it might be a little, you know, racist, but like <laughs> no, I he, don't, I, uh... he he also watched like many of his comrades like die to these, you know, same creatures. Oh no, tell me about essentially. it. Essentially, like yeah, I have a like, Batman story he, that took a turn for the wrong. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, let's kidnap the kidnapped person and hold him ransom. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> Nobody would ever suspect it. Well, Tony is super excited, and he's immediately going to say, Look, see, I told you they're going to be best friends. <laughs> Raw. Meredith goes over and, like, get, holds out a hand for Gavin to pull him up. <laughs> Gavin, like, kind of looks you up and down with your two physique <laughs> and laughs again, and then, like, just kind of, like, does a, like, a jump back onto his feet. Like, I don't know quite how to describe it, but where, like, they kind of, like, rock and then don't even, like, use their hands yeah. to pull them up, but just... It's like a Tony Jaw thing. Yeah. Break yep. dancing. I give him a small, small applause. And Tony is going to riot Falcone's sense of tiredness. Uh, go ahead and roll it. Pair of fives and a nudge. Falcone, you are tired. Do I know that this is Tony... Give me a wits roll. Yeah, I got a one with a nudge. Pair of uh, ones. You, you mildly suspect, but you can't know for sure. He'll glare daggers at Tony, and he's just going to walk away. He's not even caring about the party at the moment. He's just going to walk in the direction of the canal. While that's happening, uh, I have a question. Where is the bird in relation to the rabbit? The bird is on top of his third skull. Okay, would I be able to, while Tony is trying to uh, riot the tiredness and everything, and he's trying to figure out, could I steal the rabbit right now? For si <laughs> Just for situational thing, because I want to see how his next event of trying to contain some sort of crowd will, will play out without the rabbit present. I'm not saying it'd be long term, just maybe situationally, but you both of you roll me physique. Uh Taj add one. So four. And John, for you it'll be three. I'm gonna steal a rabbit right Dang out of your it. hand. I, I got I got a six, a four, or a three, and a one. Yeah, I got nothing. Alright, um you like jump up to try and grab it out of your hand. But at the same time, Tony turns to look at Falcom. This was wondering, that's all. So I'm gonna, I don't know how to phrase this, but I'm gonna talk to Gavin. I'll say, good sir, why are you here? Why are any of us here other than by the grace of harmony? I follow the path wherever it may lead. Unfortunately, it leads me to violence and fools like your friend who won't accept me and my sincerity. Why? Just today, several times, I've been accused of kidnapping some nobleman. I left that life, and I only wish to prove my sincerity. But I have yet to be given the chance to find some deed to prove it. Well, good sir, we're trying to rescue someone. Would you like to aid us on our quest and maybe put yourself in good light? Uh, Merida, I know I'm the stupid one in the group, but I think I'm... Smart enough to recognize they're probably not going to be too happy with that. He uh, he gives you a hearty thump on the back that kind of sends you staggering forward. And Sonichu like squawks and flies off. Fear not, young man. Intelligence and wisdom are not the same thing and you are wise for your years. I agree. 
There is no love between that one and my kind. There is no I, no chance of any sort of alliance between us. I must find my own way, and Harmony will guide me. And he turns and he starts walking away. All right, and that's going to be where we end for the night. Thank you all for listening. Uh, let's give out a couple of advancements. Uh, everybody in the group is going to get one for the day. We're going to give one to, to Taj Meal for his excellent uh, in-character role-playing for wanting to kidnap the kidnapped person. Uh, another one to uh, Lord Falcombe for just absolute wonderful role-playing in that encounter with Gavel. We're going to give two advancements to Tony for the fantastic uh, magic show. And then another one to Merida for uh, taking charge inside of Lord Spook's Manor. And so that's our episode for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed it. I also want to shout out to Always Be Infinite for the five-star review on iTunes. We greatly appreciate that. We hope we live up to your expectations and you keep enjoying the show. Mistborn and all related properties are owned by Brandon Sanderson and Dragonsteel Entertainment. The Mistborn Adventure Game is a product of Crafty Games. Special thanks to Steve Argyle for letting us use his artwork for the logo, and to Boardroom Design for putting the logo together for us. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, at LLOS Podcast, or give us an email at lostlegendsofscadriel at gmail.com. We hope that you'll like and share and give us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.